When the original Borderlands graced our screens in 2007, it told us there ain't no rest for the wicked. But since the last new Borderlands game came out five years ago, maybe there is some rest for the wicked. But hey, Borderlands 3 is on the way now. So maybe they weren't resting so much as just working really slowly or working on <clears throat> different, less successful things. I, I don't know, this metaphor doesn't really work anymore. The point is Borderlands is coming back and you're here, so have I got a story for you. I'm Dean from Curse and there will be no refunds on watching this video. Borderlands centers its story in the year 2864. Humanity has settled amongst the stars and Earth doesn't really get talked about much. No, now everybody's all about the planet of Pandora, a small planet on the edge of the galaxy and the site of what basically amounts to a futuristic gold rush. You see, at some point, somebody told a huge lie that Pandora was absolutely loaded down with valuable mineral resources. So corporations from all across the galaxy swarm the planet, throwing up hastily built settlements and slipshod strip mining camps filled with criminal force labor. Before long, the corporations realized Pandora was basically barren, aside from some weird alien ruins. So most of the companies essentially abandoned the planet, leaving behind the settlements and weapons and slave labor prison colonies to survive on their own. So basically, think like the way the British treated Australia, but then Australia became Mad Max in space. So that means Pandora is about as dangerous as it sounds. All right, now let's back up and focus a bit on that weird alien ruin we were talking about. Legends started circulating that this ruin leads to something known as a vault, an ancient alien treasure trove of weapons and information. This begins to draw people known as vault hunters to the planet. They're basically treasure hunters looking to find the vault, unlock it, and get super rich uncovering and selling all of its secrets. Problem is, nobody knows if the vault is actually even real, or if it's just a story made up by the people of Pandora to get people to keep coming. Still, there's enough truth to the rumor to get people to keep showing up, and you play as one of those four vault hunters. What you find is that there's apparently a whole cottage industry set up on Pandora for helping vault hunters. From arms dealers, to vehicle rentals, to researchers, to loud helper robots, to doctors with questionable ethics. And of course, there's the most important person on an interstellar hellscape, the sexy bartender. Anyway, using the support of people on Pandora and the mysterious guardian angel, the vault hunters eventually find pieces of a vault key. But soon enough, the Crimson Lance, a mercenary company under the employ of the Atlas Corporation, steals the pieces of the vault key and sets about opening the vault themselves. What they find inside isn't treasure though. It's a giant universe devouring monster called the Destroyer sealed away by the aliens who built the vault as a prison in the first place. I know, go figure. A planet named Pandora has something that should never be opened lest it bring destruction to the cosmos. It's crazy, right? Like who could have put that together? The vault hunters are able to fight back the destroyer and reseal the vault for another 200 years. And the guardian angel is revealed to be operating via a Hyperion Corporation satellite. That means Hyperion has been sending out this guardian angel to all sorts of vault hunters, trying to get everybody to find the vault and tracking their progress and gathering data. Borderlands 2 is set five years after the events of the original game. And in that time, vault hunting has gone from a niche hobby for fortune hungry thrill seekers to a somewhat legitimate business. Meanwhile, a valuable mineral known as Iridium is now turning up all over Pandora and the Hyperion Corporation, led by its new president, Handsome Jack, quickly moves in to monopolize it. Lots of vault hunters now are essentially corporate-backed mercenaries, including the four new playable vault hunters. Problem is, Handsome Jack, the boss of this new bunch of vault hunters, is a snarky megalomaniac who could care less about even a single person in his employ. So Borderlands 2 starts with Jack backstabbing them and leaving them all for dead. Fortunately, the vault hunters are rescued, Unfortunately, they're rescued by a claptrap, one of those helper bots that isn't actually helpful and that never shuts up ever. Oh, and that mysterious guardian angel voice from the first game? She's now back too, helping guide the Vault Hunters to the Crimson Raiders, an anti-Hyperion resistance group in the city of Sanctuary. It turns out 
The Crimson Raiders are led by Roland and Lilith, two of the Vault Hunters from the first game. Together, they're working on ending Handsome Jack's iron-fisted rule over the planet of Pandora. Their resistance goes... poorly. Guardian Angel has been part of Hyperion from the very beginning, and she and Jack have been manipulating the Vault Hunters to get Angel into Sanctuary's computer network so she can lower their shields and let Jack blow Sanctuary off the map with an orbital strike. Luckily, it turns out Sanctuary actually has the ability to fly, so the Vault Hunters are able to fly it away and avoid becoming a crater. Afterward, Angel divulges Jack's true goal. Angel is actually a human and a siren like Lilith, and also Jack's daughter. Jack has been using her power, augmented by a constant supply of iridium, to forcefully charge a new vault key, bypassing the 200 year waiting period normally required to charge the key. Angel and Jack have been manipulating things going all the way back to the events of the first game. They knew about the value of Iridium and how opening the vault would release it, so Hyperion set about guiding treasure-hungry vault hunters to do it for them. So apparently, the whole Pandora is full of rich resources wasn't a hoax after all. An assault on the Hyperion City of Opportunity ends in the vault hunters killing Angel at her request. Jack retaliates by killing Roland and capturing Lilith, controlling her siren power to continue charging the vault key. Also, in true sociopath fashion, he apparently also tortures her for fun. And that's to say nothing of what he did earlier to Mordecai's pet falcon Bloodwing. So in a combined rescue slash revenge operation, the Vault Hunters find the location of the second vault, storm it, and defeat Handsome Jack, but not before he's able to summon the warrior. It's weird though, cause like, for a bunch of legendary, universe-destroying monsters, these vault creatures sure do seem to go down pretty quick to a bunch of random adventurers with guns. Because the Vault Hunters are able to defeat the warrior, rescue Lilith, and execute Handsome Jack. Lilith starts to apply her power to destroying the Vault Key, but ends up accidentally accessing a trove of information on other vaults all across the galaxy. It turns out there are a lot of them. Lilith leaves us with a familiar phrase, and that's where the game leaves off. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. Borderlands the pre-sequel has an odd time frame. All of the playable action in the game takes place shortly after the events of the first game, but those events are being told as a flashback by Athena, one of the game's playable characters, to the surviving members of the Crimson Raiders, after the events of the second game. The story covers the rise of Hyperion, and its future leader Jack, who gets a rather unceremonious intro. The game starts with Hyperion's moon base, Helios, under attack by the Lost Legion, a mercenary company backed by the Doll Corporation. The eventual takeover of Helios leads Jack's host of Vault Hunters, Athena and three other playable characters, to the surface of Elpis, Pandora's moon. There, they go eliminate the jamming signal that deactivated Helios' defense systems and recruit a huge robot army. With those weapons in hand, as well as the assistance of Roland, Lilith, and Moxie, the Vault Hunters and Jack are able to regain control of Helios, and Jack sets about charging the huge laser weapon in the Eye of Helios. It turns out the core of the Eye of Helios is actually the Eye of the Destroyer, the whole universe-killing boss from Borderlands 1. It's yet another boon Hyperion got from the Vault Hunters opening the first vault. But Moxie soon betrays Jack and reveals that her goal all along was to secretly destroy him and the Eye, accurately predicting that his narcissistic attitude and lack of empathy would be a disastrous combination if he was also given power. And Jack doesn't handle it very well, like at all. Jack and Athena, with very little left to lose, head back down to Elpis to explore its vault, with getting even on their minds. Also, apparently that vault has already been opened. When they arrive and fight past the vault's guardians, the only thing left is a mysterious floating vault symbol. Jack touches the symbol and is shown a vision of the warrior, which seems to drive him even more insane. While he's watching that vision, Lilith shows up and punches Jack directly through the vault symbol, burning it into his face and explaining his appearance in Borderlands 2. Jack is now injured, angry, and delirious with his vision, 
and becomes completely obsessed with the idea of releasing the warrior to uh, basically just to get revenge and wipe out all the bandits on Pandora. But it also just kind of sounds like he wants to see the entire world burn because he just sort of looks at everyone as bandits at this point. So Jack goes back to Helios and strangles Hyperion CEO to death, declaring himself the new boss because apparently that's how corporate takeovers work. Back in the present time, with Athena reaching the end of her story, Lilith orders her to be executed, but a mysterious being appears and stops the bullets. She is in Iridian, one of the people who built the vaults, and she warns of a coming war and says they'll need all the vault hunters they can get. War is coming, and you will need all the vault hunters you can get. So now that we've established the existence of a bunch of other vaults, there's something important to notice in the Borderlands 3 reveal trailer. They reference new worlds, plural, on a couple of occasions. Now this would seem to indicate that this adventure is going to take us off of Pandora and its moons, but we don't yet know where we are going or if Pandora is involved at all. We also have four new Vault Hunters, in addition to a slew of returning characters from the first three games. We even saw glimpses of Reese and Vaughn, characters from the Telltale spin-off, Tales from the Borderlands. Now, Tales may have largely been a side story, but it did establish a few things that might be very important from here. First, Handsome Jack's consciousness was uploaded and saved before his death, and at one point, it took over all of Helios and was about to be placed into a new body. It also had partial control over Reese's body at one point. Second, as Jack's takeover plan was thwarted, Helios crashed down to Pandora and was destroyed, which means no more giant H satellite over Pandora. But depending on what choices in the Telltale series the writers decide to canonize, Jack's personality could still be alive, in a sense, and ready to wreak more havoc in Borderlands 3, possibly via Reese himself. What are your hopes and predictions for Borderlands 3? Let me know in the comments below and we can do some theory crafting about like what kind of vehicle is gonna hit a skag this time in the intro. It'll be fun.